is sine of 2x equal to 2 times sine of x. Well, let's check it out with the value on the calculator. So let's say x, pick some number for x, any number you want, and just check it out. So let's say I'm going to pick that x is uh, 24. So if x is 24, then 2 times x would be 48. So I'm going to check this out on my calculator and say is sine of 48 equal to 2 sine of 24. Okay, clearly not. Okay, so if sine of 2x isn't equal to 2 sine of x, what does it equal? So we are going to do what we've done before. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and write that this is no. Okay? Um, and I did my example. Um, I'll put that in that sine of 48 was not equal to 2 times sine of 24. All right, so what does sine of 2x equal? In order to figure that out, we're going to have to use a property that we already know. So what we know is we know the property for sine of a plus b. So I'm going to use the property for sine of a plus b, and I'm going to write this where the a is x and the b is x, because I can say that sine of 2x is sine of x plus x. Now using then my sine of a plus b property, then I can rewrite, I can expand this now and say sine of x plus x would be sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, so sine x cosine x, plus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle, once again both x. So I can, I know that sine x times cosine x and cosine x times the sine x are really the same thing. So really I'm, I'm saying I have sine x times cosine x plus sine x times cosine x, which means I have two of those. So this is 2 sine x cosine x. So I can say that sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So let me go back and try my example with the sine of 48 again. So instead of sine of 48 being 2 times sine of 24, it should be 2 times sine of 24 times cosine of 24. And I see that is correct, that that does equal sine of 48. Now what about cosine? So let me put a box around this is one. This is this is called a double argument property. And basically what it does is it allows us to go from twice of an angle to a single angle or back and back and forth. So if I know what x is, then I know that this is going to be 2x. Or if I know what 2x is, then I know this is going to be x. So if I know what this number is, then I would take half of that number and that would go in these two spots. So let's t do cosine 2x the same way. So we're going to say cosine of 2x is cosine of x plus x. So I'm going to be using the property cosine of a plus b. Now remember cosine of a plus b, the property would look like this. This would be cosine a cosine b. So cosine x cosine x minus, because cosines are cliquish and contrary, minus sine a sine b, so minus sine x sine x. So that would be cosine x squared and sine x squared. So I can say that cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. So that is the second double argument property. Now I'm just going to tell you that um, if I were going to, you, to do tangent, um, there is a way to figure out tangent of x, and um, but I'm not going to go through the derivation for that. Um, actually, the derivation of that comes from the fact from a, the, 
knowing the double argument pro or knowing um, th what tangent of x plus x equals. So I'm just going to tell you what tangent of 2x is. Um, actually, no, sorry, never mind. I um, Yeah, I can tell you. But no, I'm going to skip this right now. It really doesn't matter what tangent of 2x is. We hardly ever use that one, so I'll just skip that one. Okay, so those are the, the first, the two double argument properties. Now, what kind of problem might you see with this um, that I would just kind of to check your understanding? So I might say sine of 90 is equal to 2 sine of what, you know, what would go in here? All right, so if this is my 2x, then this would be x and this would be x. So half of 90 is 45. So this would be 45, 45. And then I might say, well, verify that for me. Okay, well, I know that sine of 90 is 1. And I know that sine of 45 is 1 over the square root of 2. So this is 2 times 1 over the square root of 2. And cosine of 45 is also 1 over the square root of 2. So this would be 2 over 1. So 2 in the numerator, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2 in the denominator, and this is 1, so I can see that that is indeed a true statement. Now what about this one? Cosine of pi over 3 and, and minus sine squared of pi over 3, so I should recognize this is this angle is 2 times whatever these angles. So if this is x and this is x, then this is 2 times x, so this would be 2 pi over 3. So Let's take a look at what cosine and sine of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is 60, so this would be square root of 3, 1, and 2. So cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, so this would be 1 half squared. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2, so this would be square root of 3 over 2 squared. And then cosine of 2 pi over 3, well, 2 pi over 3 is in quadrant 2. It also has a 60 degree reference angle, so it's exactly the same, only negative. So this is going to be negative one half. All right, so I'm saying negative one half is equal to one half squared, that's one fourth, minus the square root of three over two squared minus three fourths, which would be negative two fourths, and negative two fourths and negative one half are the same. Okay, so those would be just some ways you could verify that these properties are correct. Now, there are two other properties um, that are also cosine of 2x properties. There's actually three different ways to write cosine of 2x. So if you look at this, you can see cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x, and this is really similar to another property we would know, which is that the Pythagorean property that cosine square root of x plus sine square root of x equals 1. So don't get those two mixed up. They're two different properties. But I'm going to use the Pythagorean property in order to write a couple other versions of cosine of 2x. So I want you to, to notice that I could solve the Pythagorean property for cosine square root of x, or I could solve it for sine square root of x. So I could say cosine of square root of x is 1 minus sine square root of x, or I could say sine square root of x is 1 minus cosine square root of x by subtracting one of the squared terms from both sides of the equation. And then I would be able to do a substitution. For example, I could take 1 plus sine square root of x, and I could substitute it in for cosine square root of x. If I did this, this is what would happen. I would end up with cosine of 2x equals 1 minus sine squared x minus sine squared x, which would be cosine of 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. I could also take 1 minus cosine squared of x and substitute it up here for sine squared of x which would give me a third way to write cosine of 2x. So if I do that, I would have cosine of 2x equals cosine squared of x minus, and see I'm putting 1 minus cosine squared of x in for sine squared of x, so minus 1 minus cosine squared of x. And notice since I'm subtracting a quantity, I need to put it in parentheses.
because that's, that subtraction has to distribute to both of those terms. So that would be cosine squared of x minus 1 minus a negative, so plus cosine squared of x. So now what I have is 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. So I have three different ways to write cosine squared of x minus 1. So here's a summary of the double argument properties. Sine of 2x is 2 sine of x cosine of x. Cosine of 2x can be written three different ways. Cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x, or I can have 2 of the cosine squared of x minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So notice how those are kind of all connected together. We're going to use these bottom two, the ones in blue and green, to, de to derive a, just a few more properties, and then we'll be done with our pro list of properties for this year.